Okay, people, let's continue in our consideration of 1 Peter 1, where we're talking about uh, holiness. We spoke yesterday about God declaring that we should be holy because He is holy. We spoke about behavioral holiness, the fact that that is a, an end result of understanding our holiness being set apart for the purpose of God. Never, ever forget that. That as a result of who we are, we understand whose we are, because that is the more important truth. Whose we are will determine who we are. Now, I want to continue to the very next verse, because it tells you how to be holy. It tells you the essence of holiness is founding, found simply, it says this, living as strangers in fear, reverent fear. Now, this whole stranger thing is something that we're going to talk about for a while. But uh, I want to talk today certainly about what it means to fear God. I guess we have these commands throughout Scripture to fear God and, and, uh, and live. And we see how the fear of God is something that is mentioned very number of times. But uh, today I want to say that I'm so glad this verse qualifies what the fear of God looks like. It declares it as a reverent fear, a reverent fear. Now, the difference between fear and reverent fear is fear is always a negative thing. Fear is declared by God as something we don't want to do. And God says, do not fear a thousand times in the Bible. We are do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. And I know he's talking about circumstances and stuff that's going on in the world around. But reverent fear of God is a really cool thing. And we see this in so many believers' lives as we read Scripture. We look at Moses as he stood at the burning bush. And God said, Moses, this is holy ground that you're standing on. Take off your shoes. You see, there's an action associated with reverent fear. It's not quivering in the corner. It's not looking for something that we could just dig a hole and, and hide our, our heads in shame. And Moses found himself fully on his face in the presence of God in reverent fear. Isaiah chapter 6, we have the same thing with Isaiah declaring, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. And he hears the angels singing that beautiful song. And he falls flat on his face and he declares himself to be unclean in the presence of a holy God. Now this reverent fear is what this is all about. I wonder today when we look at reverence, if we're not looking at something that is a dying feature of church. We tend to treat God as a buddy buddy. We have a this homeboy view of God. God is my homeboy. That God is my best buddy. He's my chummy. I'm going to tell you people, that is such dangerous grounds to walk on. I even think of some of the terminology, and I've mentioned this to you before. Guys, be careful what you say. Because very often some of the terminology that comes out of our, our mouths when we declare, Oh my gee, you know, and I think, no, no, God is holy. You don't want to associate him with yourself. He is holy. Or we talk about God as being the man upstairs. People, he's not the man upstairs. He is God. And when we declare him to these, these silly ways we speak, I wonder if that's not a, a decline in the reverence that we should be having. I think of some of the church services that we have, and I never want to judge it too badly, but I would see this frivolousness coming in, that people arrive chewing gum and drinking Cokes and, and looking like they're coming to a local party thing. And I think, I, I wonder if we're not treading on thin ice. If I wonder if this isn't the thin edge of the wedge sometimes in taking us to places that the church should not be going. Let's treat God with deep reverence. Let's treat God with a, with a sense of awe, of holy wonder. And when we come in to worship Him, let's do it like that. Let's take the words of the songs that we sing and, and sing them as if we mean them. Because superficial words coming out of our lips is not pleasing to God. So let's have a look at our reverence for God in these coming days. 
make sure that when he comes to church, which he does, I think sometimes God would like to leave church because he says, hey, I don't fit here. This is not for me. But when God comes to church and there are people singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty and, and singing with every ounce of passion that they can, I think God is glorified. I think that's what accentuates His holiness. I hope we find that to be true. Let's reverently fear the Lord. Cheers, guys. We'll see you again. Bye now.